A very good morning, students, and let's get into the today's class. And as I have asked for a question in yesterday, and the answer is that a different part of the ground cannot be depicted in any direct manner in respect to the difference in depression and elevation. So, if there is any depression or elevation in the surface, that cannot be directly depicted on a plain sheet of paper. So, what we can do is, we can do some conventional way to show the relief difference. And few of the conventional way are hatchuring, stippling or shading, form lines, layering and contouring. So, let's see the first thing that is hatchuring. So, this is a hatchured map in which you can feel the difference in the relief. Actually, there is no any uh, marking of height, but just after seeing the image itself, you can feel that some image is much deeper, some portion is much deeper, and some portion is totally flat like that. So, you can feel the relief difference just by drawing short lines, and that is called the hatchures. The methods of depicting the surface relief consist of drawing lines or hachures running in direction of steepest slope is called hachuring and in which you can see when the dotted lines are closer together then the ground will be very steep and the lines are dispersed then the ground is gentle. So, you can feel the steepness or gentleness from the concentration of this hachur. And this is a hachured map of some location. The drawbacks from this is that no information regarding the actual ground elevation. That is, you can see the image, you can say that this is a valley or sometimes you may feel the same thing as hill, right? So, this will be confusing. So, there is no any direct representation of the ground elevation and that is the biggest drawback in this. That is a valley as well as a hill can have a same pattern. And to overcome this thing what they have tried is they just tried to use triangular marks in which they can show the spot height like that they can draw a small triangle here and they can mention the actual elevation of that particular point and there is also other drawback that is you cannot enter any additional information on that and even if you enter any additional information that is very difficult to read actually the map which we are using used to call as base map that is we have to enter the additional geological data on this map but in such a map we cannot enter any additional data and even if you enter any such additional data that will be very difficult to read and these are the true two drawbacks of this thing and the second method is stippling or shading in which dot lines or even shades were used the similar to hachur consists of shades with dots instead of hachures. So instead of drawing short lines in this method they are using dots as well as shades. And the surface density of the dots being indication of the relative steepness of the ground surface. If the dots are so denser then the ground will be so steep. If the dots are so spare then the ground will be gentle. And this consists of the same drawback that is there may be no additional actual elevation of the surface as well you cannot enter any additional data in this. And this is the next method called form lines in which continuous lines were used to show the surface zigzag surface irregularities. A continuous line will show the elevation or the relief of the ground surface. The run close together on steep slope and dispersed on gentle slope. The same way in which earlier we said that it is denser in steep slope and dispersed in gentle slope. Same way this thing also will be steepest in closed and gentle in dispersed location. This gives no idea about the altitude of the area. So there will be the same drawbacks as mentioned earlier. And the next method is the layering in which 
the usage of color to indicate the range of height from mean sea level. So this you might have seen in your schoolings when you are doing your geography classes, the drawing colors in your map. The same way they are drawing the using the colors to show the height difference. Say for example, the mean sea level will be marked in light blue and when there is a deep portion of the sea, they will be using dark blue. In the same way, from the margin, that is the sea level towards the ground, they will be using green color followed by brown from 1000 feet to 2000 feet and then followed by purple. And this method provides sufficient space for entire field detail. So if you spot out any such a rock type or altitude of rock like strike and dip, you can simply plot in this map that may not be any trouble in drawing as well as reading the data. But the problem is that it will not show the accurate elevation. It will show the elevation in certain range like in thousands of feet. The color will show from 0 to 1000 feet like green color or it may show from 1000 to 2000 feet like in brown color like that. So you cannot go for any accurate detailed work using this layering. So only the geography students can make use of it which is not sufficient for us to use. And the next method is contouring in which line joining equal elevations are used. So this is a contoured map which we can use it as base map where you can enter additional data as well. We can show the actual elevation of some particular point. Say for example if you are pointing out this point and asking for the height I can simply say it is 15 meter above the mean sea level like that. And this is how actually it is in the surface which has been shown in the figure. And the definition of contour we will see in the next class. And the question for the next class is you have to explain the contouring from the text that is given here. Thank you.